So you want to be a woodworker, a photographer, a musician, a designer, a um, line, oh, actor, a painter, a sculptor, a sound engineer, a blacksmith. Uh, this bit's getting old. You get it. Whatever it is that you want to be, you're going to need a good toolbox. And so that's what we're going to talk about building your toolbox. And while we talk about it, I am going to work on building this saw till because it is the summer, my son is home from school, and my build time, not to mention my filming time, is at a premium. So we do what we got to do. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna sharpen up a couple of chisels while we talk and I'm gonna to need to pare down these dovetails. But don't worry, won't get in the way. The really fortunate among us have had at least one really good teacher. You know the kind I'm talking about. Kind where you sign up for the class and then by the end of the class, the end of the semester, end or whatever, you discover not only have you learned the class material, but you've learned something about life too. Yeah. When you're lucky enough to get one of those professors, one of those teachers, it's really easy to fill up your toolbox with the stuff that they say, because so much of what they say is good. So much of what they say is useful. But well, they're really lucky to get a teacher like that. Pretty much everybody at some point has a teacher who's just not good. They don't have much to teach. A lot of what they teach you might be dated, or it might just not be very good advice. Or maybe it's something that worked for them that they're trying to pass off as general knowledge or whatever. Those teachers are really, really tricky to get the kind of good information from that you're looking for, obviously. For those that are curious, I'm using DMT diamond stones to sharpen these. One time when I was in college, I was complaining to my father about a teacher, and my father said this to me. I always remember, even the worst teacher has at least one or two good lessons in them. And so, stay open to those good lessons. Put those in your toolbox and then throw the rest away. Now, when my dad said this, it was laced with a lot of profanity. <clears throat> now, I'm trying not to use profanity here on my YouTube channel, just in order to try to keep it as family friendly as possible. However, I have no such qualms about this on my Patreon. And you can see the version that is laced with profanity. Diamond stones are nice because you don't have to worry about cupping. You don't have to worry about dishing, none of that. They last for a really long time. The unfortunate thing about them is that you just don't get the same kind of polish off of them that you get off of stones. So, if you're gonna use diamonds, then you gotta have a strop. Not that big a deal. Now, this was great advice, and with good reason. My dad was a good teacher. But it was really just the beginning of really good advice. See, as I have gotten older, and I have learned more things about more things, I have discovered the lie of the best way. The best way doesn't really mean anything, aside from this is the teacher's favorite way to do it. By the way, I am cleaning out the excess in these dovetails because trying to get down in there with a coping saw is just not going to look as nice as you using a chisel. Paul Sellers will sometimes do it with a coping saw, but I am no Paul Sellers. Now, of course, I'd been told many times, oh, there's no right way to do things. There's no wrong way to do things. There are just different ways and we can learn them and learn from them. Exactly the same thing I'm saying to you now. But once I actually learned it, or, you know, admitted that whatever teacher told me that was right, it allowed me to grow as a person, as an artist, as all good things. It meant that I could go through life finding out new things without having to go, oh, what if I'm not doing it the best way? What's the best way? Doesn't exist. Now, I could just build up my toolbox. This also opens you up to this really great freeing thing. Realizing that you can have admiration and respect for somebody and not have the same best stuff as they do. Good example, there is a very well-known and respected woodworker by the name of Christopher Schwartz. His company is called Lost Art Press. If you don't know it, look it up because it is just a great company. Now, I have nothing but respect for Christopher Schwartz. He is done some 
amazing work. He has published incredible books that otherwise may have been lost to time, and he has written a bunch of wonderful books about workbenches, history, design, tools, all sorts of stuff. Just a fascinating guy. Now for him, the best way to keep track of his tools and to know where each one of them is, is by using a tool chest. He actually wrote a book called The Anarchist Tool Chest in which he shows you how to build this tool chest that you can use to keep track of all of your tools. But it's not actually what I need right now. I never take my tools anywhere. I only use them in my garage shop. And as I've mentioned on this channel before, I have ADHD and the working memory of like a goldfish with memento disease, same disease that Dory the fish has. So it really helps me to be able to see where all of my tools are. That's why I'm building this, and that's why I'm gonna build stuff for the walls over there. So that when I need something, I can just sort of look around the room and take stock. If they were all in a tool chest, I just know myself, and I know I would never put them back. I would get them out, I would fully intend to put them back, but I would get to the end of the workday, and I'd be like, well, no one else is using this space, I'll just leave everything there. And then before you know it, the bench looks like this again. <laughs> and it's impossible to work. So I'm hanging everything on the walls so that I can find it. I am also making it so that everything on the walls comes off in one motion and goes back on in one motion. Because if I have to do more than one or two motions, I'm again, just not gonna put them back. It's just gonna feel like it's more work putting them back when I know I'm gonna need to get them out again. So why put them back? I'm super time blind. I always forget what time it is. I always lose track of how long it's been since I'm working. All of that. It's better for me to just be able to look around. The toolbox is something that you use as part of your career. You're not just collecting things when you build a toolbox. You are finding things that will help you create. And that means that you are using those things to help you build a career. And a career doesn't exist in the future. It only exists behind you. You have what you're doing now, you have what hasn't happened yet, and you have your career behind you. And that is why you need a good toolbox to help with what you're doing now, with what will become your career. That is the true power of learning to keep learning. If you think you know it all, you're sunk. The smartest people I've ever known are people who ask questions and people who admit that they don't know stuff. That's what makes them smart because they wanna keep learning new stuff. So stay open to new stuff, stay open to teachers, stay open to ideas, stay open to newer techniques because that's how you grow. That's how you get better. That's how you make new stuff. And that's how that new stuff stays interesting. I mentioned before that I have a Patreon. You can see the names of my patrons scrolling right there. If you would like to see your name there, go over to my Patreon, link in the description, and become a patron. Even if you don't become a patron, I am so very grateful for your views, for your support, for your likes, for your comments, all of it. It just means the world to me. It just means everything that there seem to be people who care what I have to say. And so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.